Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ben from the Merrimack Public Library, and this is If You Know You Know, Kitchen Survival. Uh, in this video series, I'm going to walk you through some different recipes and teach you some tips and tricks to hopefully help you feel more confident in the kitchen. Today, we're going to work on some real basic skills with grilled cheese. So let's get right to it. So I have here all the ingredients for just a real basic, uh, simple grilled cheese. Uh, we're going to start with the classic, and then I'm going to show you uh, a variation that I really like. Um, always a good idea to make sure you have all your ingredients before you start cooking, because nothing uh, is worse than getting halfway into a recipe and realizing you don't have something you need. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get your pan going over medium-low heat. Uh, you can do this while you're getting everything else together to give the pan time to heat up. So yeah, about there is where you want it. Right, next, you want to take your butter and spread each side, or one side of each slice of bread. Uh, now, if your butter's a little too cold, like mine is, and it's uh, starting to mess up your bread and just sort of destroy it, uh, you can also just take it and throw it in the pan. Okay, so I've had my pan heating for a couple minutes now over medium-low, and since my butter was a little cold and was uh, tearing up my bread, I'm just going to pop the butter in here and melt it. And we're just going to dump the bread in there and sort of almost fry it in the butter instead of coating, the, instead of coating it. Now you can also use mayonnaise for this, um, and it works pretty much the same as uh, spreading butter on the bread method. Um, I don't really care for it. It sort of gives it more of an eggy, tangy taste, but uh, it's definitely got a bunch of people who really like it that way. Okay, so once your butter is melted, you're gonna assemble. I've got just some basic white bread here and a couple of slices of uh, sharp cheddar. You can use any cheese you want. Um, you can use like Kraft Singles. Um, you can use some Swiss, which might go nice with something with a different bread, like a, a rye or something. Uh, really whatever, whatever combination of bread and cheese you like. Um, procedure is pretty much the same. Now, a key thing to keep in mind, the reason we're doing a, a kind of a low heat is to keep the bread from browning uh, too fast before the cheese melts. So once it's been a few minutes, uh, you might want to just get your spatula just under there and check to see how it's doing. Ours is still pretty pale, so we're going to let it go another couple minutes. starting to get there, but we're still going to give it a little bit longer. If it ever seems like it's taking a long time, you can always crank the heat up a little bit. Um, the key thing is just don't go too high too fast so that you don't burn your bread. Alright, so that's looking nice and golden brown, so we're going to flip the whole thing carefully. And now we let it go on the other side for about the same length of time. And I want to make sure that this side is getting, getting all that butter in there too. So you can double check that it's absorbing some. Might need a little bit more butter under there to make sure that it gets, uh, to make sure that it gets coated. So let's throw a little more butter on our pan. like it's soaked in pretty well. So now we can just let this sit. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Gonna check on how this guy's doing. 
All right, so that was just actually about two, two and a half minutes. It's nice and browned on both sides and ready to serve. All right, here's our basic grilled cheese. Nice crunchy exterior and nice and melty on the inside too. All right, so that's a basic grilled cheese. What if you're what if you're kind of bored or feeling adventurous or something and want to try something a little different? Um, so for that, I'm gonna show you, uh, share with you guys one of my favorite variations of grilled cheese. It sort of mixes in a little bit of sweetness. So here we have all the ingredients for one of my favorite uh, variations of grilled cheese. Uh, I've got a couple slices each of Gouda and Pavardi cheeses. Uh, cheese blends are a great way to sort of uh, experiment or take your grilled cheese game to the next level. And these two go really nicely together because Gouda is kind of a little smoky and uh, intensely flavored and Havarti is sort of creamy. So they really balance each other out. Uh, next I've got the bread. And uh, this is a uh, harvest bread with some dried cranberries in it and some pecans uh, and a little bit of figs to uh, add some more sweetness and it's sort of a nice dense bread that'll toast up really nicely. And lastly, I've got an apple that I'm going to cut a slice out of and throw in the middle for some bonus sweetness. Alright, so I'm going to start by buttering my bread on both sides, or no, sorry, on one side. Buttering each slice of bread on one side. pan uh, heating up, or in my case, since I'm doing these back-to-back, -back, staying warm, uh, right in the background here. It doesn't have to be uh, a huge amount of butter, as long as it sort of covers the bread, you'll be able to get that good uh, toasty uh, toastiness you really want. Because this one's a little bit thicker than the other, I'm gonna go ahead and do this open side, uh, open style. So I'm just gonna drop my two slices of bread in. Again, over uh, medium low heat. And then I'm just going to cover it up with my cheese as best I can. Since these aren't square slices of bread, I kind of just tore it up a little roughly. It's all gonna melt anyway. So it just sort of matters if you can keep it more or less even. Since I'm going to put an apple slice in the middle here, uh, it also helps. There's another reason to make this a, an open-faced style. So it's about even. And we're going to leave this to sit for the bread to uh, toast up. All right, so next I'm going to slice my apple. This is a gala apple. You can really use uh, whatever kind of apple you like, like a green apple if you, if you want something a little bit tartar. Um, a honey crisp would probably be good. I usually think that a, like a firmer, crispier apple is nice. So I've got my knife here. Uh, you might have heard it said it's better to have a sharp knife in the kitchen. Um, that's definitely true when you're slicing something that's sort of round and might go wobbly on you like an apple. Uh, the reason that you want a sharp knife is a dull knife you're going to use more pressure when you're trying to cut and that makes it way more likely that you're going to slip and something will go flying and you might hurt yourself. So a knife that doesn't take a lot of force to cut is actually a lot safer. So I'm just going to cut through there. As I say that, I realize this knife isn't quite as sharp as I thought, so I'm sort of scoring to make sure that I don't have to use as much force to get through the skin. All right, and a couple, couple slices of apple should pretty much cover my, uh, my bread. Let me just make sure I've got one more, okay, one or two more just in case I need them. 
So our cheese is starting to melt. Our bread is toasting a little bit, but not as dark as we'd like. And I can crank the heat a little bit here. When you're using a big slice of bread like this, it'll usually uh, brown a little bit more towards the center. So if you don't want any burned spots, you can double check the different parts, but this one seems to be going pretty evenly, probably because I let the pan, because the pan's been uh, heated all the way through for a bit. Now, uh, a good trick to know for an open face grilled cheese like this, if you're having the opposite problem, where your cheese isn't melting but your bread is browning, you can throw a lid on the pot. Um, this will trap more of the heat and sort of uh, radiate some extra heat down on the top and it'll help melt your cheese faster. But my cheese is actually melting just fine, so I can leave that alone. So once the cheese is pretty much melted, you can throw your apple slices in here and they'll st uh, stick to the cheese so you don't have to worry about them going flopping all over. And I like to add the apple pretty close to when I'm uh, done because I don't really want it to get uh, mushy. Just maybe heat up a little bit so it isn't um, really cold in the middle of this hot sandwich. And you can fold on top and this top isn't quite done so I'm going to probably let this cook a little longer on each side. But now I can keep a, a slightly better eye on how each side is browning. And this kind of bread, unfortunately, doesn't always brown all the way evenly just because of the shape of it's a little different. It's got these nuts and berries in there, but you know, I think that's gonna be good for now. So, I'm gonna call that ready to eat. And here's our fancier grilled cheese with an apple slice. A little harder to cut, admittedly. A little messier maybe, but I really like the flavor combinations. there you have it, two great versions of grilled cheese. Uh, I encourage you to go out and find your own favorite, you know, try what combinations of uh, cheese and bread and maybe some add-ons you like, you know. Uh, you could always throw some bacon in there, you could throw whatever you want. Uh, the world is your oyster and really it's, you know, pretty hard to go wrong with uh, bread, cheese, and butter. So uh, until next time, this has been Ben from the Merrimack Public Library, If You Know You Know, Kitchen Survival, and uh, I'll see you next time.